bringing you key insights, tips, and advice from the brightest minds in the Canadian franchising industry. This is the Franchise Canada Chats Podcast. Hello, and welcome to the Franchise Canada Chats Podcast where every week we sit down with franchisors and franchisees to help you learn more about the world of franchising. I'm your co-host, Kristen. And I'm your co-host, Trisha. And in today's episode, we sat down with Michelle Burden, the founder of Cozen Yoga and Wellbeing Studio. Michelle recently moved to Canada from Dubai to set up her own yoga practice, where she instructs on crystal therapy, meditations, Reiki, chakra healing, and a whole lot more. In this episode, we discuss why franchisees are drawn to this business, what sets this yoga studio apart, what kind of support and or training Michelle offers her franchisees, what advice she'd give people with disabilities who want to invest in a franchise, and so much more. Without further ado, here's our interview with Michelle Burton. Hi, Michelle. How are you doing? Very good. How are you? I'm really good. Thank you for asking. So let's just dive right in. Tell us about Cozen and Yoga and Wellbeing Studio. So Cozen Yoga and Wellbeing Studio is a unique concept over here in Canada. We are a one-stop shop for people's spiritual needs and well-being and holistic living. So we're not just your average typical yoga studio, as we were speaking earlier yeah. about that. <laughs> uh, we offer yoga classes, we offer training, um, holistic healing, meditations, and a Zen room, a private meditation room as well. So that's you know, in, in just what Cozen is all about. And you, it seems like you combine a bunch of different parts of yoga or meditation together in one studio. Mm-hmm. Why did you decide to focus on an array of things instead of just one aspect of holistic yoga? That's a great question. We're all about the mind, body, soul, right? That's our, our key philosophy. And that's what Cozen brings to the population here in Canada and the rest of the world. We did start out in Dubai. Uh, I've been working in this for the past 10 years. And I noticed that if you focus on just one aspect of a human being, there are other aspects get ignored. And so bringing it all together really brings a complete package. You see, a lot of time when you focus on yoga alone, it kind of turns into fitness, which is not really what yoga is about. Yoga is a type of meditation called movement-based meditation. It's very similar to Sufi and Kinin. These are movement meditations. So often studios, when they focus on yoga by itself, they forget the core aspect of what yoga is all about, and it is a meditation. And then it turns into acrobatics or fitness. Um, so when we, when I wanted to set up this studio, and when I say we, I mean with my spiritual guides and my mentors and angels from the higher realms, we want to set this up. We wanted to bring that ancient wisdom and that knowledge back into the world today to bring that mind, body, and soul approach to everything. Makes sense, because to do yoga without meditations, it's like to walk around without your senses. And in addition to that, a lot of people who come to our classes, with the earth ascending and with awakenings that are happening around the globe, many people are choosing a spiritual-based path and careers in the spiritual field. So a lot of my clients have asked me to train them in what I know. So over the years, I started incorporating training in, into that aspect as well. And then they come to me for healing because sometimes they, they have a certain disorder in their body, but traditional medicine cannot help them with that. There is certain limitations in there. And the reason being is most of the cause of disease is when your mind and your soul is in dis-ease. And when that happens, it will manifest in your body as disease. So you can treat the symptoms with traditional medicine. But if you want to get to the core of it, that's where energy healing comes in. So if I only did yoga and meditation and training without actually helping people heal themselves and to see what really is possible, it just wouldn't be a service to the community. So that's why we do it all. And then we also sell products. Because when they come for training, when they come for healing, and they see what these pro- what these you know crystals or chakra stones can do for them, they want to then purchase it so they could then heal themselves. So it's just by client demand that we became a one stop shop for everything. Yeah. And how did you get it started? So can you tell us about your background? Oh uh, yeah. So I've been I've been training since I was three years old. Okay with my mother and her mother and a lot of mentors and guides in the spiritual sectors. For example, I was trained in sound healing at a Buddhist temple. I was trained in meditations at an ashram. 
I trained in angel channeling at the cathedral. So I had a lot of religious, spiritual, and also metaphysical teachers from childhood right up until adulthood. Um, then about two, I would say two years ago, uh, I was at another well-being center where a teacher there called me in because she had a client. This is in Dubai, right? This is in Dubai, okay. yeah. She had a client who had shoulder pains for several years, and she used to go for physical therapy. She tried chiropractic. Nothing was and the teacher Kate called me to come in and see if I could help her. So I came in, I had a look at her, and I got my selenite wand. I sat down by her earth star chakra, which is about just below her feet. I had to lie down. And uh, I started then getting visuals. I am clairvoyant, so I started seeing portals on her body. And I've never done that work before. <laughs> you know, I've done other things, but not that particular thing. And the teacher told me, why don't you just take it all out? I was like, okay, I'll try. I've not done this. So I removed the portals from her body. It was my first time. I never believed in that part of spirituality. And at the end of that session, she felt much better. And the pain was gone. Very sudden, just instantaneously. There was another clairvoyant in the room that I wasn't aware of. And what she saw was white light coming up all over the ceiling. And then these black kind of like orbs, dark orbs going into the white light, getting transmuted, and coming back out as white orbs. And then she asked me, what did you do? I said, I have no idea. This is my first time. No idea. She said, can you teach it to us? I was like, first I need to figure out what I just did, then I will teach it to you. So I went back, I meditated, and I realized what I was doing was basically clearing out the space of negative energy. So I did my first workshop called Clearing Your Space of Negative and Unwanted Energy. She came. Uh, and another lady came, and another lady. So we had three ladies in my house sitting on cushions on the floor of my living room, did the workshop. And the second time I did that, there were six. The third time I did that, there were 20. So it grew from there, and people wanted to learn more, and I started putting trainings together. And that was the first time I started um, teaching uh, what it is I know to others. Interesting. And do you think people can just pick that up, like, you could teach it to me, for example, and I would just learn how to do it? Or is it something that's in someone? I, I believe, see, if, if you're a human, and we all are, <laughs> we have capabilities far beyond the comprehension. We just don't know it. Uh, there's so much ancient knowledge, so much ancient wisdom, so much possibilities that have been silenced in the past, that have been hidden uh, from persecution or uh, disbelief or whatever that, that is. And people have really suppressed that. And the knowledge has just been forgotten, that's all. So it's just about bringing the knowledge back to the surface and sharing it. So sharing what the Pope knows, sharing what Buddhist monks know, sharing what ancient mystery schools have known for all this while and have buried the knowledge, bringing that to the surface and sharing people. Anyone can do that. I've done an aura course where I've taught people how to see auras. And by the end of the course, people started seeing auras. And they did not know that I can see an aura. They, they thought, I have to be clairvoyant in order to see an aura. But in doing that, you're creating that limitation with yourself because you're creating that path. And we shape our own path. We shape our own journey. So we are all clairvoyants. We just don't know it. And when you learn that you are already and you believe in that, you'll start seeing whatever you want to see. You will start creating whatever you want to create. We are all made in the image of the creator. And because of that, we too are the creator of our world that's around us. So um, how did you bring this concept to Canada? Because uh, I'm just curious to know how that was so, received. So two years ago, I yeah. started that in Dubai. Mm -hmm. And I had clients coming in, of course, from Dubai and mm -hmm. around the UAE. I also had clients flying in from other countries. Yeah. And one of the countries people flying in from was Canada. So I noticed that there was a big demand for what I do mm -hmm. out here. And people tell me, all right, can you sell me a franchise? Can you, um, can you teach it to me so I can go over there and teach it? So there's all that going on. My parents have been here for like oh, 10 years. So I have to say, I also have personal reasons for coming here. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, so yeah, personal reasons. And then also with my mission on earth. Um, I don't know how open you are to concept, but we, I do not believe you live only once. You live only once several times. <laughs> And so this is my eighth lifetime here on Earth. I remember all of them. And I also know that this is my last. 
So one of the things I want to do in this lifetime is to pass on whatever knowledge I have to help humanity heal and rise. And Canada was calling to me. Different lands called to you, and Canada was calling to me. And I decided to come here and set it up here. Now, Aura was created, uh, the name Aura is one of my brands. Okay. It was created in Dubai. That was two years ago. That's actually created my daughter. She is now eight years old. She sat with the Lemurian crystal one day, meditated, got lots of downloads from Lemuria, and drew a koru, which is a symbol of the unfolding of life. And when I came here, I wanted to create, you know, bring that same brand here. But Aura here is taken by so many companies. <laughs> and I felt if I used that name here, yeah. it, would, it would really dilute its true essence. And that's when I had to create a new brand, and I came up with Cozen. And what does Cozen mean? Oh, a lovely question. I love that. <laughs> um, so, Cozen is amalgamation of what we are and what we do. So, the first word is Ki. Ki, we know it in Chinese as Qi, in India as Prana, and in English as Universal Life Force Energy. So, Ki is basically the reason we exist, and we are alive in this third dimensional world okay it it allows us to manifest here and it sustains us the other word is zen zen is a state of being okay and the o is actually the enso symbol it's a zen symbol it represents when your mind is in calm and free that is when your body can then create the world you desire so that is what Kozen is all about. Yeah. And did you experience like, or like, what are the challenges? I guess you've been facing bringing your concepts to Canada. It's because I guess very different from Dubai. So, is there anything? Else? Well, two things. You know, words have a certain energy associated with them. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I always do is I'm very cautious about certain words and their meaning and the energy behind it, especially since I do a lot of energy work. So I would not focus on the word challenge um, and I would not focus on the word, you know, difficult and okay. things like that. So what I would say is it, the dynamics are different. Okay. Uh, it, Dubai, the culture is very different there as Canada is. And if I am to focus on the culture, because we create the world around us, it will be different. If I focus on it, it be different. Because I don't choose to do that, I don't focus on that, it was never a factor, and it is not a factor in there. So I find Canada very easy to settle into, as Dubai is. But with that said, I do miss home. I was there for 26 years, yeah. so that's a long time over there. So personally, I do miss it. I'll be going back in April, because we have one of our franchises there as well. And she's a very good friend. So I'll be going over to Dubai, spending some time in the business and reconnecting with the land and my friends over there. Um, so the people here are wonderful, really wonderful people here. So it was very easy, I would say, to settle over here. And it's also quite dynamic. People here in uh, Mississauga, where I, where I live in, come from all over the world. So it is wonderful to integrate into society over here. Uh, people are so dynamic. They, they bring in their various cultures into this, into this land. And that's really beautiful. Dubai is very similar in that way. In Dubai as well, it's very cosmopolitan. People from all walks of life and culture come to Dubai. The land calls to them. And on a, I guess, a business side of it, did you research anything about starting your own business? Or did you kind of, I mean, I guess you had to, but that obviously wasn't your background before um so what was that like for you researching and figuring out that yes i want to open it open up business in canada but also franchise it to be honest with you i didn't go on the internet and do a whole bunch of research it's i'm just going with the flow i have a path i have a, a mission i want to do and i'm just going when my clients call me and i think that's very important for businesses because if you're able to find the demand in there and you meet that demand, your business is successful. But personally as well, since I want to be helping people, when they come to me and they say, we want you here, I'm going to come there. <laughs> if I can be there for you and support you and guide you, I'm going to 
I'm going to come then, I'm going to be over there. My background in, in education has been business. So I studied law, I studied business law, I studied uh, business management uh, in my bachelor's, and I studied HR management in my master's. So I have the university uh, degrees for that. However, I'll be very frank, most of what is done and what's driving my business is my clients and what they need. So even um, I just published my March calendar of events and that's just purely what my clients want to learn. It's not me sitting behind a computer and saying, okay, this month I'm going to teach this course and I'm going to do this and do that. It's purely driven by uh, my clients and what the demand is and I fill that demand in there. So what has your, well, you, have, you only came here in May, so it's not even up to a year. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the first few months, what's, what, what has it been like? Uh, it's been exciting okay. because coming up with a new brand, yeah. a new yeah. image, yeah. meeting new people, yeah. uh, meeting new clients. It's it's been wonderful. It's yeah. been you know it's you know when you do something new, there's that there's a new energy, there's that excitement. So it's been all of that, mm-hmm. and it's just been a wonderful journey from from A to now. Uh, there are some things that require a lot of my focus, especially when a lot of bringing Kozen here and creating Kozen has been a lot of work and manifestation, and that is not always as quick and easy as snapping your fingers. So um, it's been a lot of work. It's been very exciting. I've, I've got to do a lot of astral traveling, transdimensional work. So it's, it's really wonderful. And you recently became... A CFA member this past year. Yes. Uh, so, how many locations do you have currently in Canada and around the world? Okay. So, before I came here, and that's how I got into franchising, is I had Aura in Aura Wellbeing Center in Dubai, and I, the land of Canada was calling me, and I wanted to come over here, and I let my clients over there know about it, and one of them said, "I want to buy your company," and I was like. I'm not. I'm not ready to let go of Aura. <laughs> what we do? All right, let's get into franchising. I was like, all right. So I was in Dubai. We got a franchise lawyer there. We worked that out, and I sold the franchise before I moved here. So I come here. It's great, Cozen, great Cozen, and then uh, you know people are hearing about me working, you know, setting up the studio, uh, going for exhibitions, and then interest start pouring in. They were they wanted to get in the. Mississauga franchise and Caledon and Nova Scotia and I said hold up Canada's different let me first take a step back let me look into franchising and earlier you mentioned what business research I did and the only business research I did in Canada was going on the internet and typing in franchising in Canada <laughs> and as soon as I did that I came across CFA oh, <laughs> <laughs> and I joined you <laughs> and uh, I did that and we, we did that we were spread, there were members of CFA, and then we were spread because we were putting things on our Facebook that were constructing the Mississauga Studio. Then people wanted to buy the franchise from Mississauga Studio. And then for Caledon, we got to request North Scotia, we got three, and we got for Spain and uh, Nepal. So I said, all right, I'm going to, you know, I usually go with the flow. Well, I'm just taking some time, I'm going to slow down. I'm going to wait for my grand launch, March 1, at our studio, and take it from there and see how things go. And then I will start contacting, yes. you know, and start franchising. So your grand launch is on March 1st in Saga? Mm-hmm. And are you excited? Are you prepared? Are you nervous? I am very excited, really yeah. looking forward yeah. to it. And uh, I know some of our people that are coming for the grand launch are very excited to be there. To get close to well. <laughs> <laughs> love to see you all there. Um, and it's 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 free. I'm just I'm gonna do free talks and um, seminars about crystals and psychic development and twin flames because everyone wants to learn about twin flames now. Well, um, so the concept of twin flames is that uh, we all we believe that we all come from the divine. Some people call it God, some people call it source. And from source, if you, if you imagine in the universe this giant, big, massive, powerful energy, and from that, little chunks come out. And these are what we call souls, right? And then they split in two, and they go into two bodies. The divine male and the divine female, okay? And they go into two bodies on Earth, and that's a twin flame. They're not the same as soulmates. 
soulmates are people, uh, other souls that you have a relationship with, a part of your soul family, um, and you have an agreement before you incarnate that you're going to incarnate for a particular mission on Earth. They can help you learn something, or you can help guide them. You will have some kind of bond with them, and you incarnate here and your soulmates. Out of all the things that you teach, what is your favorite thing, or do you have a favorite thing? Oh, that's so tough. <laughs> that's a very tough question. That's not what you sent me. <laughs> um, so, a favorite uh, I, it would be very difficult to pick a favorite because I, I work with so much. I, I teach crystals and chakras and, and angels. But I, if I have to choose something that I love doing, it would be trans-dimensional travel. That's something I truly enjoy. Um, I just get so much from that. I haven't thought that. I do teach small workshops like astral travel, astral projection. So that would be a good starting point. But... If I can get any students to reach that level, that's something I would love to teach in the future. Can you describe what that is or <laughs> for our listeners if they don't know? Okay, so you gotta keep an open mind here. <laughs> Let me start like, off with saying starters. That. Yeah. Astro. <laughs> and we're like, what? <laughs> Just keep an open mind because what I'm a lot of what I'm gonna say is very near for Canada. Okay. And remember one thing, I, I taught this in the Middle East in an Islamic country. <laughs> so I'm sure in Canada. They're much more open-minded people yeah. here. Okay. So, um, could you repeat your question? Um, could you describe a little bit about what astro... Astral travel. Okay. Yes. So, um, there are two things. There are several things. But um, let me narrow it down to the often things that people get often confused about is the difference between astral travel and astral projection. They're not the same thing. Astral projection is when you project your image or your soul or your essence or a part of your energy out of your body, okay? People do this subconsciously all the time. For example, let's say you walk into a room, right? Mm -hmm. It's a party, or maybe it's a conference, you know, a board meeting, you walk in the room, you get a sense of what the energy in the room is like. Like, you can walk into a room and know that a fight just took place there. How does that happen? That happens is because a part of your energy projects out of your body, merges with the energy in the room, and it's kind of like a sense. You can then sense that energy in the room and it goes back into your body and it relays the message through your neurons into your brain and then that's how you understand and you can sense in the physical body the energy in the room what you were doing there is a type of astral projection without knowing you're doing that another type it could be during guided meditation where you can actually astral project your image out of your body and some clairvoyants can see that to be able to see your astral projection. Astral travel is very different. Astral travel is taking that to the next level where you can then, let's say, travel out of this room. You can travel out of Earth. You can travel to another planet. Or you can also do trans-dimensional travel, which is what I was telling you is my favorite thing to do. And I would love to one day teach that for those who are ready to learn that. Um, and you can actually do that but your body is still here. And when you're able to do that, you gain the wisdom of these higher realms and higher dimensions. What's also very fascinating is if you can astral travel to parallel dimensions and meet yourself, and if you travel to a parallel dimension where your self is much more advanced in terms of life than you are, you will then learn so much. And that's, what we're, that's how I actually created the studio. So what I did is over, I think it, uh, it was maybe August, August, September, October, three months, August, September, October of last year, where I was doing astral travel to a parallel universe, where I am about 15 years ahead of where I am today. So this person has already got the studio done and everything. And I spent time with her energy. Is basically myself. <laughs> Spent time with the energy. And when I did that, when I came back, she was in suite 405, 50 Burnham Thorpe Road West. She had that studio in there. Wow. Now, remember one thing. I did not come with substantial funds to create my studio. I did not do that. So learning this wisdom and learning how she did it and connecting with the energy she was connected with, 
I brought that energy back with me. And the studio happened. It was constructed. Um, the value is about 107000 Um Five room studio. And it's the same as it is there 15 years down the road. And uh, I don't know how to put this into words, but this is manifestation. Yeah. So based off that, how do you... Like, your recruitment process must be a little different than other people when it comes to, like, getting franchisees. So do you kind of have to tap into people's energy, or how does that kind of work? For franchisees? Yeah. Well, that's an interesting thing, because um, I would say that they are coming to the business. The franchisees are coming to the business, just as the clients are coming. I believe that since I'm walking the divine path and the path that I'm to be walking, once you do that, once you're living life purpose, everything flows with ease. And that's what's happening. Everything is flowing with ease. So as the land kind of called me, there are people being called to this. They're soul calling, so to speak. And when they answer that soul calling, they are then coming. So you don't have to ever worry, I guess, about recruiting the wrong franchisee? No, I, I don't I don't think that that would ever be an issue as in recruiting a wrong uh, franchisee. This is not something that is for everybody. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's for people who want to grow. That doesn't mean that you have to know what I know and you have to be able to astral travel and projects and trans-dimensional work and Reiki healing. You don't have to do all those things. Your soul will be called and all you have to do is just answer that call. And when you answer it, I'll be there. And I'll teach you. Okay. So you do a training for mm-hmm. your... For example, for the one in Dubai and the one in Caledon. Um, what I'm going to work with is that they have, I have my studio and they come in and they learn everything from me. So I don't only teach the operations, the marketing, um, the branding, the customer service, client relations, software, app. Not just that, but they can also learn. All the franchises can learn for free everything I teach. So they would learn astrology, crystal healing, Reiki. Uh, for example, Reiki is very popular because in Canada, I'm the only one who's level right to five. Most people here are only to level three. So I could teach someone Reiki all the way to five and uh, they could learn it. Or the model also could exist for, for franchisees um, where maybe they don't want to learn everything. They want to choose maybe I only want to learn Reiki, only want to learn crystal healing. They can then hire other people, other facilitators to teach the other courses. We have a growing team of local and international facilitators for this. So they don't have to know everything. You know. So how long is that process like for you to teach your new franchisees all these things if they want to learn them? Mm-hmm. Is, does it depend on the person, how long, is it, how long it takes them to pick it up? Or is it like, you'll learn this in one day? Well, to learn about the business, to learn about codes and the business, how to operate it, how to market it, how to get your clients rolling in. That's not long. It's a 14-day training. That's very, very quick. And they can have their business up and running within the month. We had that for Dubai, actually. They were up and running within a month. And it's interesting because I wasn't there. I was here. She was there. You know, um, She decided to buy the franchise there. I came here, and then we did the training long distance. So in one month, it was up and running. So it's pretty quick. But if someone wants to Let's say they've, they want to explore, they choose what they want to learn, and all franchisees can learn with me for free. Not just that, they can learn in any of our branches anywhere around the world for free as well. Because I want to um, celebrate them, celebrate the journey, but I also want to make all this learning accessible to franchise owners. So it's up to them what they want to study, when they want to study. If they want to study, they don't have to. You don't have to do this to have a franchise. But if they were to... Uh, higher facilitators, mm-hmm. they would have to learn that stuff because they're the ones actually helping people, your clients, when they come to the studio. The facilitators. Yes. Yeah, the faci- yeah. yeah, and we work with a lot of um, really highly skilled facilitators. So, for example, um, there are founders of healing modalities that come in as facilitators. So, right. yeah, they're pretty highly yeah. skilled. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I'm backtracking a little bit here because I know you mentioned that your daughter Mm-hmm. actually founded uh, Aura, was that it? Well, the brand, The yes. brand, yes. okay. So does she do anything now with your studio? And... Oh, so uh, she did do a class in yeah. something she calls cold yoga. Oh, okay. Yeah, she did a lot about 
hot yoga. And she introduced this concept in Dubai called cold yoga. Because she told me that, as she told the people who came there, that with cold yoga, your breathing gets deeper and you're able to have oxygen go right through to your feet and back up. So your muscles and your cells get fully oxygenated, which doesn't, you know, the opposite of that happens in hot yoga, right? So she introduced that concept in there. And she's with me every step of the way. So even when we did the Close and Logo, how does it look? What's your ideas behind it? Um, even the programs, the training. And both my daughter and son, they're very much into crystals. So they helped me pick and choose crystals for the retail shop. And children are the best to choose because they're so pure. Their energy, their soul is it's just so pure. They haven't had that human programming <laughs> that many grown-ups have. So it's very easy for crystals to call to them. So whenever I go shopping, it's, I would take them along and have them choose you know, the really high, powerful crystals for my shop. So they help with that as well. And every brainstorming idea I need. I cannot do it myself. <laughs> <laughs> because you're the only just one so right now that's doing all the training. You're basically, you're the franchisor, you're the head office. Yes. Do you ever consider to help you out as you expand or get busier, bringing in any new people oh, to yeah. help you facilitate all this? Oh, yes, of course, of course. I, I know in Dubai, I think they're a team of eight now, okay. you know, so yeah, it's, it's going to grow. Yeah. Well, I think I wanted to have that home first for this wonderful team, and I was just waiting for the studio to be ready. I've had a few people come and say they want to be part of it, two of them so far. And I told them, come to grand opening, let me meet you. <laughs> yeah, let's start there. <laughs> I'll meet you. We can have a chat about it after yes. after the events yeah. at 9 o'clock in the night. Yeah. Perfect time. We'll have a chat about it and welcome you to the team. Um, they already know what they want to be doing. So we have uh, we have a few international people joining in. Um, they are facilitators. One's coming in from Italy. He is the founder of Transcendent Quantum Healing. They'll be coming in in June. Um, we have another international facilitator from, she's really from the US, but she's in Dubai now. And she'll be coming in. She's the founder of Womb Medicine Woman Training. So she'll be coming for that. So, yeah, our team's growing. <laughs> and do these people just come and contact you first and reach out to you, or are you actively kind of looking for people? Uh, they reach out. They yeah, uh, the only one I'd say is John Carlo, the one in, in Italy, he'll be coming here in June. I sent him a message. Yeah, we've been friends on Facebook for quite a while. And I just sent him a Facebook message and say, would you like to bring what you do here? And he said, yeah. And I was like, great. <laughs> we'll see you here. And then I sent him another message and said, oh, I'm doing a shamanic healing retreat in June. Would you want to come for that? And he's like, yep. So we're doing that. <laughs> <laughs> so I know like one of the big, parts of your story um, would be that is that you do have a disability and you you work you know as a mm-hmm. franchise or all this these different you take on all these different roles with that can you can you talk about your disability a bit uh, like for... oh yeah. yeah so it's um it's muscle weakness, it's muscle weakness. yeah okay. that's the best way to understand it okay um a few years ago i was diagnosed with uh, hypotonia that is low muscle tone and recently, in, when I moved here, we did some tests, and they said I've got a bit of muscle atrophy. So that's when I think your muscles start to like die off and stuff like that. So generally, what would happen with hypotonia and muscle atrophy is you would have difficulty uh, moving around, um, general weakness, and you may not be able to physically do things that other people who don't have that condition do it. Yeah. Um, my daughter has uh, hypotonia as well. My son's got apraxia which is something different about the praxis, uh, which is basically um, the nerves in his head is not able to communicate very well to the muscles in his face. So it affects his speech, it affects his uh, facial muscles from movement and smiling and, and things like that. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's difficult. And I know what you're probably thinking, and if not, you should be thinking this. <laughs> she didn't come in in a wheelchair. <laughs> Let me tell you, I landed in a wheelchair in Canada. I left to buy in a wheelchair, and sometimes when I when it's very difficult for me to manifest this healthy body, yes, I will be in a wheelchair. But no, I'm not always in one. Um, there are some days that are worse than others, uh, only because I give in to it. 
you know it's all about the mindset i, I do believe and this is with no disrespect to people um that are in in wheelchairs my mother she had als and she also had hypotonia and progressive muscular atrophy so there's something in the family we're doing genetic testing now to to get to the root cause of all of that but either way no matter what the root cause is it's not curable by by traditional medicine it's, it's something uh, like progressive muscular atrophy. It means your muscles just keep wasting away and dying until you lose all function of your muscles and you pass away. However, I don't focus on that. <laughs> <laughs> because if I have to focus on that, and sometimes I forget, and I, and I tend to focus, and the days I do that, I can't get out of bed. I'm yeah. serious. I just can't. Yeah. My hands don't work. My legs barely function. I can't stand up. I'm going to fall. It's true. That does happen. But on the days I choose not to focus on that and I focus on believing that it's not a disability. The mind is very, very powerful. You can actually manifest the way your world is if you program your body with certain beliefs. No relation. There's no relation between a disability and running a business mm-hmm. at all. If you make a relationship, then you make a relationship and you can do that. You can do whatever you want. But I would say don't make a relationship. Yeah. Uh, to it because to be honest um you know when my daughter was really young doctor said she would never walk and i have to get her all these devices and contraptions and things that will hold her straight up i was like no <laughs> she wants to walk one day she will walk yeah. and she did <laughs> so it's the same like that i mean uh, i'm not saying okay get off your disability and be healthy and be fine sometimes it's it depends on your mindset and your attachment to your physical world and your 3D world. Uh, but despite whatever attachment you may have, you can do anything you want to do, whether it's to run a business or whether it's to work in a business, whether it's to work on a business. So what what would be your advice in general, I guess, like for anyone that's looking to become a franchisor or a franchisee to run a business? Yeah, do it. Mindset, do it. <laughs> yeah, just to do it. Yeah. I mean, when I was, a, I also coach, right? Yeah. So many people come to me for coaching. Mm-hmm. And they want to start businesses. And how long have you been thinking about it? And nobody tells me one day or five days. Everyone tells me, oh, years, 10 years, 15 years, six months. Some even say, I've tried many businesses and they've all failed. And then I come to you. (laughs) You know? (laughs) I would say just do it. Don't let anything limit you. No matter what's going on for you. Because some people say, oh, I don't have enough funds to start a business. Well, neither did I. You know, um, some people say, uh, you know, I'm I'm in a, I don't know, I'm on a walking stick or I'm in a wheelchair. And I'm like, okay, so you are. What does that mean? It means nothing. I mean, it probably means everything to you, but it should not mean so much that it stops you from doing anything that you want to do. And you just mentioned um, funding a business. Yeah. You said that you didn't have the funds to do open your own business or it was difficult. Can you talk me about? to okay <laughs> we can do that definitely um so the first thing like i told you when i first started i was i was a stay-at-home mom raising my kids at that time i did not have a big bank balance to start it so it was three cushions in my living room i got on three clients they paid me 100 bucks each there are 300 put that into the business so i saw that they wanted to buy products off me and they actually bought my own sage So I had to start stocking up because if they're coming for training, they want to buy products. So I don't want to be selling my own personal products. So I used the 300 to buy more products. So the next session, I I had six people come in. Whatever money I made, I put it back into the business and grew from there. And kept growing. So I kept putting it back into it and it just started growing. But of course, it it grew to a point where it was enough to sustain our livelihood. Uh, to a certain point but not enough i would say to invest into having a studio and all that and as i mentioned to you i worked with transdimensional travel seeing whatever me in in this other pal world did that made her successful tapping into the friendship she had the energy she had and bringing that energy here and then it just happened however i needed a backup plan because I think it's important. I, I may operate spiritually, but I also operate logically, okay. right? I have two sides, two hemispheres mm-hmm. to my brain. So in order to do that, I did contact uh, a bank and I told them, can I have a loan? And they said, sure. And I said, I don't want it now, but give me the approval for it. And then if I ever need to tap into it, I will ask you to give it to me. And we did that. So I do have some funds 
that have been pre-approved by a bank that should I ever need to tap into for operating costs or whatever, I will have that. And that's something I advise business owners to do that because the first couple of years of any business, whether you're a franchisor, whether you're a franchisee, you never know how it goes. Mm-hmm. So always have, you don't want to suddenly close down within five years. I mean, what is it? 70% of businesses close in the first five years, if not more. Yeah, you don't yeah. want to do that. So you got to always have your backup plans and your standby, which include backup finances. So how, I know, you know, yoga is not competitive. It's, you know, all that stuff. But the reality is there are tons of yoga studios uh, mm-hmm. in Toronto and even like across Canada. How do you kind of set yourself apart or, you know, ensure that your business is up and running with all that competition going <laughs> on? Well, the first step is don't see them as competition. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I've never done that. I believe that we're all in this yeah. for the spiritual growth of this planet. So if there are people running on the yoga studios, I salute them and I honor them that they are walking their path and they're doing that. I do not see them as competition. Okay. So that's the first step is not to see as competition because if I see them as competition, they will become competition and then I'll have to compete with them. And then I have to <laughs> have price wars with them and try to steal clients from them. And yeah, that takes me down a winding road downwards. Mm-hmm. don't want to do that. So first thing I don't see them as competition. The second thing is that whatever they're doing and they're working so hard and so beautifully doing, it's really wonderful. They are targeting that fitness market and that's working great for them. We're not in the fitness market. So when we do yoga, we're not doing it for fitness. We're doing it as a meditation-based yoga approach. And with that said, Kozen is just not another yoga studio. Kozen is a one-stop shop, spiritual, well-being and wellness center. Yoga might be one of seven different things we offer from trainings um, to um, meditations to um, consultation and healing and retail store. So it's, it's quite a different sector, I would say, within the wellness industry. I do not believe at the measure. All business owners, especially in the wellness sectors, they are my partners, my soul sisters, my soul brothers. We're all here for a common purpose. I do not sit to worry about, is my business going to get clients? Are clients going to be coming to me? Because then I'm putting that worry energy into the company. And then I will struggle with finding clients. I don't do that. There is enough people in this world. There are millions of people in the world. So we don't need to compete. This podcast right now. Like, <laughs> They're probably yes. like, oh God. <laughs> What's she on about? <laughs> They're like, I'm sold. I want to open up my own cousin. Do they, like, do they go to your website? Do they mm-hmm. go down to Mississauga? If they're obviously not everyone's in Ontario and right. they're on Mississauga, how would they, what's the first step that someone would do to actually... Well, we do have a, a franchise with us page on our website, uh, www.cozen.ca. So they could uh, go in there, check out the information, and they could drop in a note, and I'd get that. Or they could find me, let them find me <laughs> on Facebook. Yeah. Or... Okay. <laughs> you know the terms. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. So I'll st- we're going to throw sentences at you, and then finish them off okay so the most interesting thing i've done recently is <laughs> well i would say um transdimensional travel <laughs> I, I was like if you don't say that <laughs> <laughs> that other yeah no because i wouldn't have the studio if i didn't do that i'll be very mm-hmm. honest with you yeah. and that was really exciting never done it before cool. a good franchise franchisee is Someone who is wonderful, blessed, and divine. And that's basically every human on this planet. A good franchisor is? Someone who's there every step of the way with their franchisee. Not someone who just does a quick training and then they're out the door. The most important thing in life is? Living it. Not just breathing, but actually being alive, feeling alive, and living your life. If I could meet anyone? Ah, well, if you're going to think I'm crazy if I say this. <laughs> <laughs> but if I could meet anyone, I think it would be Source. 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 On Earth. Yeah, on Earth. Okay. Yeah. The person who has the most positive influence on me as a business person is? 
I see that will that will entail for me to have a mentor, right? Or have a role model, someone that I look up to. You can say yourself. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, it's fifteen years from now. <laughs> no, it's me fifteen years. Now. It's not me. I mean, there are wonderful people out there. I mean, yeah. like, like Tony Robbins. When I was a coach, I used to um, watch all his episodes, and but I would not say I would follow that because really what I'm doing I I tried to follow someone who had a well-being center long ago but it wasn't within my my thing I would just say I'm following my path my mission my calling because if I'm trying to follow somebody or just an I, idol I look up to and I'm trying to be that person I will not be myself and I will not do what I want to do mm. yeah interesting Canadian franchising is is exciting because you have something something called the Canadian Franchise Association, which we didn't have back in Dubai. <laughs> so if anyone want to go there to that side of the world, let me know. <laughs> it, well, thank you so much, Michelle. It was an honor and to have you. Well, thank you so much for having here. me today. We've learned so much. Yes, we have. Oh gosh, and like it. yeah. Right. It's enlightening and a bit crazy out there. <laughs> <laughs>